Today on Riff Spirits and Gear, we create the guitar tone from the first Foo Fighters album. One of my favorite albums to come out in the 90s came out in, I think it was July 1995. I waited eagerly for the album to hit stores and I immediately had my mom take me to the CD store, the, the, the Camelot Music, I think it was called, to pick up the album on, I think it was 4th of July, if I'm not mistaken. The first Foo Fighters album started a long storied career for Dave Grohl and his post Nirvana band. Now, obviously they have had a lot of hit songs and a lot of hit records, but it all starts with the first self-titled Foo Fighters record. And today I'm going to aim to at least create or recreate the vibe that that album has. Now, if you don't care about any of the nerdy nonsense we are about to talk about, skip to the time code right here and you can just hear what I came up with and just, yeah, then leave a comment, et cetera, et cetera. But if you wanna stick around, you wanna get a little nerdy with me, let's move on. So to give some context on the first album, one would need to know that it was recorded at Robert Lang Studios in Seattle. I am just outside of Seattle and I've worked out of Robert Lang Studios a couple of different times and Dave Grohl tracked all of the instruments himself with engineer Barrett Jones. Now, the main amplifier for the distorted guitar tones was the house amplifier at Robert Lang at the time, which was a Marshall JCM 900 dual reverb amplifier. Now, this is a pretty common amplifier and is the sound of the 90s, really, along with the Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and a couple of other amps, but the 900 was a very 90s amplifier and Dave basically used what he had at his disposal. Now, he used a Les Paul Custom, a 91 Les Paul Custom, his white one, and I believe he also had an SG and this Trini Lopez um, ES guitar that he has used on all of the Foo Fighters albums. And he used that and he banged out the whole album in a week, week and a half, something like that. Now, Barrett did not mix the album. A couple of other guys in Colorado mixed the record, but Barrett engineered and produced the album along with Dave. Pretty cool. Now, the guitar tone on the first Foo Fighters record is, it's straight ahead martial tone, but it has kind of a unique honkiness to it in that all of the high end on the guitars is basically lopped off and then compensated for with a lot of upper mids and the guitar is a little muddy, it's kind of honky, which brings me to, I will not be trying to recreate the mix from this album. Modern recording is simply too clean sounding and it's not dirty enough because back then they were recording everything to analog tape using an analog desk. I will not be replicating the mix from the first Foo Fighters album. I will be trying to capture the vibe of the guitar tone from the first record. And I will be doing my best to kind of approximate everything else, but it's gonna sound real clean and it's not gonna sound as dirty as the first album. So what am I going to use to recreate that vibe? Well, since I don't have a JCM 900, I'm going to use my 1985 Marshall JCM 800 2203 100 watt amp. Now there are some big differences between the JCM 800 and the JCM 900, and that is up for lots of debate on a random sleazy gear forum, not here. There are differences, however, I think I can approximate that tone with my JCM 800 with the use of an overdrive pedal because uh, the gain on tap for the JCM 900 is much, much more than the 800. So that overdrive that I will be using today is a VFE, ice cream. Now this uh, overdrive is no longer made. Uh, this is from VFE effects, um, actually just here in Seattle. And this has a high cut and a low cut, basically a low and high pass filter. So I can kind of cut off preemptively some of the crunchiness and the fizziness that results in boosting the JCM 800. So I still get my mid range. Oh, I can also boost the mid range as well with this overdrive, but it basically lets me do everything I need to do right up front before I even hit the amplifier. Now I know what you guys are saying, well, I thought Dave used a rat. Well, live, the Foo Fighters did use a Turbo Rat 
uh, fuzz pedals, which I do have here. This particular example is a 1990 uh, Turbo Rat with uh, the really good uh, chip in it. And this is basically identical to what Dave used live in the Foo Fighters. However, this was only mainly used for the song Exhausted. So I will not be using that today for this particular video because the song I will be doing is Alone and Easy Target. But I thought I would just make mention because Dave is a famous user of the rat. Now, as far as guitars go, Dave primarily used a uh, 1991 Gibson Les Paul Custom. I so happen to have a Bernie 1990 Les Paul Custom and I have a Duncan JB in the bridge and I think this guitar will be suited just nicely for trying to recreate the Foo Fighters album tone. So without further ado, let's see what I came up with and then we're gonna circle back and then I'm gonna go over how I came up with the tone. Here we go. All right, so I have Logic up and here are the tracks. This is the, the song project that I recorded and I have my DI's and I have two microphones on my cabinet. Uh, I have a Coffee Cabs 212 uh, guitar cabinet uh, with a Vintage 30 and an H75 Creamback. Each are mic'd with a Rode Procaster podcasting mic, which is a large diaphragm dynamic mic. So I have my left guitars and my right guitars. Now this is just two performances, pan, you know, one pan left, one pan right, with the bass straight up the middle and some drums. Super, super simple. But what we're gonna focus on is the guitar. So currently right now, here's what it sounds like. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off all of the, the processing. And I'm gonna let you hear the mix and then we're going to go over what I did for processing the guitars. That's with no processing at all. That's just the straight Marshall 800 into the 212. Now first, I noticed with the uh, the Foo Fighters record, they're chopping off a lot of top end. So I did play with that. I have uh, Universal Audio, Oxford EQ, and I have the uh, low frequency or the high frequency cut, low frequency pass um, at 6400 Hertz, which is a lot but I only have a 12 dB slope, so there's still some top end in there, but I'm gonna turn this on and off and let you guys hear exactly what it's doing. Okay, scooping out a little bit of the mid-range and taking out some of the muddiness in the low end. Next, I came in with an API. So I'm gonna move these over right here. 
So next I came in with an API uh, 560, also from Universal Audio. I'm taking away more top end, 16K, 8K. 16K is almost all the way down at minus 12 dB. 8K, and then I'm kind of boosting a little bit of the upper mids, taking out a little bit of the lower mids, and then boosting some of the low end. So I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna play the guitar again, and then I'm gonna turn it on, and you'll hear a huge difference. Okay, we're getting there. Next, I'm gonna compress it. Now, I'm not compressing a whole lot. I'm just kind of kissing the distressor, but it does add a lot to it. So currently it's off and I'm gonna turn it on. Actually, I'm gonna do it this way. So I don't load the piece of CPU up and you're gonna hear what it's doing. Okay, it's adding a little bit of beef and compressing the tone. Now, the last thing, the last key to the ingredient, it's still too bright and it's still too harsh for me. Um, adding the tape machine is, is really, really what uh, it makes this really, really good. So I'm gonna start with the tape machine off and I'm gonna turn it on. See the tape machine, I'm doing a couple of different things with the tape machine. I'm dipping the volume, the input volume, so I remain relatively clean when I hit the tape machine. I am at seven and a half ips, which I'm rolling off. That's cutting off all of the harshness of the top end that I'm still hearing, and it's just rounding everything off as a tape machine did back then. And I really think this is the key to the guitar tone, as it was on the Smashing Pumpkins one, as well, but I just love the oxide tape and what it does. And uh, that's the guitar tone for a lone and easy target. That's what I did, let's play it again. And that is how I recreated the guitar tone from the self-titled Foo Fighters album. Uh, if you have another suggestion for a tonal recreation, leave them down below in the comments and uh, we'll see what we get to in the next episode. Fluff out. Wow, another video gone by. Hope it was pretty good. I mean, it's probably pretty good. But if it wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> awkward, right?